My name is Dr. Alex Verhoeven. I'm one of the practicing cardiologists at Metro Health Medical Center. And today I would like to discuss a Wigger's diagram for a normal patient. If you look at the curves that are present on this picture, there's quite a bit of uh, material here. So let, let's take one curve at a time and, and walk through this. The first curve that I want you to uh, point out is the electrocardiogram. And mainly we're going to use this as the timer for the systole and for the diastole. You should realize that the QRS complex is the beginning of systole and then the T wave is in the diastolic period. So that this will help us to follow the other curves in this picture and just with respect to timing. The other curve that uh, I want to point out and again, we're not going to talk much about it other than just for you to look at, is the uh, ventricular volumes. And so here, what you want to look at is um, basically the change in volume in the left ventricle with respect to, to the timing of the QRS complex. So obviously, when you have uh, systole, as indicated by the by the QRS, the ventricular volume first doesn't change because you have isovolumic contraction. And then once the aortic valve opens, which is right here, you have rapid decrease in the ventricular volume as indicated by this down sloping curve. Once the aortic valve is closed, you have ventricular relaxation that's isovolumic, so the volumes don't change. At this point right here, you have the mitral valve uh, opening because the left atrial pressure supersedes the left ventricular pressure. So now you have volume that's increasing first rapidly because you have rapid filling and then more slowly as the ventricular filling progresses. And then you have another rapid increase in the uh, ventricular volume because of the left atrial kick and uh, the cycle repeats. So this is the ventricular volume curve. So now let's look at the uh, cardiac curves, uh, mainly the uh, aortic pressure, atrial pressure, and then the ventricular pressure. Um, I guess if you look at the ventricular pressure, depending on what's going on with, uh, with the heart, which uh, phase of the cardiac cycle it is, obviously when you are beginning of the uh, systole, when the QRS shows you that, uh, that the ventricle starts contracting, initially your ventricular volume goes up. Uh, even though the volume doesn't change as we looked uh, at the isovolumic contraction, but the ventricular volume does go up uh, to the point where the ventricular pressures overseed systemic pressures, and that's when the aortic valve opens, which is indicated right here. So here you can actually look uh, at the ventricular pressures and the aortic pressures together, and what you see is that the ventricular pressure continues to go up, and it is actually higher. If you look at the ventricular pressure in blue and the aortic pressure in gray, you can see that the ventricular pressure is higher than the aortic pressure. And that's what you need for the blood to eject. Once the ventricular pressure goes down as the systole comes to an end, the aortic pressure actually supersedes the, the ventricular pressure. Again, gray versus blue. And this is when you have the aortic valve closure. The blue curve continues to decline because now you have ventricular relaxation at the isovolumic stage right here. And it goes down to about here where the left atrial pressures that are also uh, in gray, now you see that the left atrial pressure supersedes the ventricular pressure, and this is when the mitral valve opens. So now you have filling of the left ventricle uh, because the mitral valve opens. Left atrium pressure interplay where the left atrial pressure go is higher than the ventricular pressure at first, and then the pressures kind of equalize as indicated here, and then you have the atrial kick. Again, the left atrial pressure higher than the ventricular pressure. The flow of blood is from the left atrial side towards the left ventricular side. And then the cycle again repeats over here.